Hey guys, and welcome back to Drop the Mic. As y'all come in that door, don't forget to hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And remember that everything that I say over here is alleged. It's in my opinion, and it's for entertainment purposes only. Y'all, we gonna hop right into this mess of the Scots. I'm sorry, the Scots, the Snots. Um, being scammers again. Like, these people never cease to amaze me and their scamming and con artist ways in my opinion so y'all let's start it off with the expo the event all right it's slated to happen again for season seven in this year 2024 all right if y'all go over and check out miss show styles and spirit she laid out the entire thing for you all she even found a couple mistakes okay so the funny thing about it is they don't have a venue or none of that stuff yet but listen i don't want to spoil it y'all go check out uh, show styles and spirit um and she'll give y'all the whole overview of the expo what i'm about to give y'all is some dag on tea about the girls fighting and when i say the girls i am including mr marcia scott aka marceau scott aka you leak leak leaky booty scott okay so apparently all right they are at it again with stealing from people it is y'all it is too much it is too much so i'm gonna start this off with this basically a person by the name of christopher quest john yancey all right he addressed marceau and leticia publicly all right along and he tagged a young lady named jasmine young okay and this is how it started marceau scott leticia scott didn't Jasmine Young and I sit with you over dinner and discuss us all doing this event together since we, the Financial Literacy Institute, had already done it two years successfully prior in Atlanta? We literally had you and Melody S. Holt as speakers at our first year's event, which I asked you both personally to attend since we are college alumni. What happened? I don't recall being contacted since that sit down. I'm confused and otherwise offended by this. I saw the one in Huntsville and thought they'll contact us about collaboration. And now this brother and sister, please explain. Then they go on to say, and I am only addressing this publicly because this post has been made public. So it's necessary. Jasmine is outdone and in infuriated since we literally explained our blueprint to you only to see it duplicated on international television without our knowledge or permission moreover you know i'm a man of standard integrity and respect i wouldn't come to you in this fashion unless i deemed it fit and necessary i say oh child they are pissed so it looks like Marceau and Letitia are up to the same shit, y'all. Stealing people's ideas. Do they have a freaking original thought in their fucking body? Like seriously, these people are such lames. They're horrible entrepreneurs. They don't have bu good business acumen. And they forever trying to copy and paste somebody else's idea. And then guess what they always do? They do it horribly because they ain't built for this ish. They're horrible. They ain't nothing but lazy mofos that try to come up without putting the work in. That's them. All right, y'all. So listen, it goes on further. So Marceau tags Tisha, all right, and says that they're both in Atlanta. So the guy Christopher comes on and says, Marceau Scott. This wasn't an argument. It was a conversation about what happened. So apparently Marceau must have said something, y'all. I may be reading these a little bit out of order, but we're going to get it together at the end. I'm going to wrap it all up, but I want y'all to hear what was going back and forth. So Marceau says to him, call to Jasmine, call me right now if this is a friendship you value. 
and I'm giving y'all seconds to delete this shit. What? Oh, for real? Is that a threat? Oh, hell. Okay, so then he goes on to say, and Christopher, this is a fucking argument, bro, and I'm pissed. So Jasmine says, Marceau, why should I call? I didn't offend you. <laughs> LOL. Like, bitch, I didn't offend you. <laughs> it, where that come from? All right. So let's see what else, child, because this stuff is, ooh, it's done got messy. It's done got a little messy. All right. Um, all right. There's a little bit cut off, but it says, <clears throat> I, I will daze in this closing. Y'all should have trademarked the expo or got a copyright because out of the hundreds of thousands of expos that's exactly alike quote we stole yours so I'm assuming that's Marceau and them are Marceau arguing back and saying that they should have trademarked and copyrighted <clears throat> listen no I'm gonna give my I'm gonna give my commentary at the end give my commentary at the end so Jasmine comes back and says Marceau how we obviously don't want to see it when we have talked to y'all multiple times about it you obviously don't want to face the truth and accept y'all hurt y'all friends because my phone still hasn't rang. Don't put us on that we don't want to see where communication broke down. We see where it broke down over here, but do you see it? And at this point, it seems like the answer to that is no, because if you did, we would have been on the phone from the very first sight of any comment. But yet here we are. Y'all take it easy. So then Christopher comes back and says, Marcel Scott, you pissed? How about seeing a friend and his wife you sat and broke bread with, shared an idea with to collaborate on, only to see them plastered it on own TV internationally as if the idea was theirs. Then come to your city and do it again and not one call, text, email, or anything, bro? You pissed? Psh, how you think Jasmine feels? We go way back, bro. This could have been a phone call, but you chose a whole event and didn't hit us back not once. We even talked to Tisha about it over Zoom after the Huntsville Expo and said she would get back with us with Jazz and never did. Like I said, I have no reason to fabricate. You know my character and integrity. Then he goes on to say, Marso, I revealed the truth, bro. You can manipulate the narrative because I know you're good at that. I can't com combat it as eloquently and smooth as you because that's not how I communicate. I say what it is and leave it there. But you know the conversation we had at Parsha Restaurant that day. Black trademark has zero to do with anything I'm saying. It's all good though when i see you i'm still gonna greet you the same i just know how it is shaking my head it really be your own people and on black history month at that so then <clears throat> he puts a picture up and says this ain't you bro black wall street panel speaker marcel scott and is okay so then he goes on to say marcel Brother, you know me personally, so I'm not going to do the social media game. I love you and Tisha both, but nah, this is wrong and you know it. A conversation with me and Jasmine would have been amazing since, since we presented this blueprint and idea to you. You even said, yeah, that sounds good. We can definitely collaborate. And Tisha followed with, yeah, and Black can be the sponsor for the event. But I guess I'm just talking. I even kept quiet about the Huntsville Expo attempt and I kept it all love at HC. I even manned the door for you at Black. I love. I have no reason to fabricate or even speculate because I believe this is the event you meant to post. Again, you know I never address anything unless I'm 100% validated. Ooh, child. This is getting messy. Oh my goodness. I, I just don't even know what else to say. All right. So then he comes back and he says, all right. He already said that, that he was going to, you know, listen, you're going to manipulate the truth. 
All right. He said that he was 100 percent validated. And then Jasmine posted and said, folks can steal your original idea all day long. But I guarantee you it won't have the same sauce as your own. Imitate it, but never duplicate it. Yes, sis. She goes on to say, and Marceau, in all honesty, no bullshit. I feel like if the friendship was valued, this wouldn't have happened. That's where the offense lies for me. Before I do something that I think would even remotely offend any one of my friends, I go to them before I do it. But that's just me. So then another guy comes in. I don't know what he's asking, but he says, hey, alumni, I'll be hosting an event called the Expo De Negro. We will have vendors and a panel. Does anyone have dibs on that? So I don't know what that's about. Then. OK, Marceau threatens them, basically saying to them, if this is a friendship you value, you're going to delete this shit and all this stuff. Um, you know, listen, Jasmine said, why should I call you? Next thing you know, Marceau and he and then Christopher says to Marceau, OK, with the thumbs up, you win. Good luck with the event, though. But again, you know, like, you know what it is. Jasmine says to Marceau, plus T got my number. If y'all wanted to call Y'all could. Y'all could have, man. If it was all love like we thought it was, this wouldn't even be a conversation being had for real. And that's the part that hurts the worst. On top of this event, T and I have talked about everything else, man. Then he goes, Marcel, this wasn't an argument. It was a conversation about what happened. So here is Marcel. Christopher, and he re replies to him, I am so confused. He always is. Was you confused about that booty leak? Anyway, let me just keep going. You and Jasmine talked about doing a financial literacy, literacy event because she is a CPA. Help me, please. I'm much more confused than upset. I'm actually very sorry that I hurt you and Jasmine. Y'all are friends and I would never intentionally do that. If I felt for one second that this was supposed to be anything more, I would have reached out. We really didn't even want to want or care about the credit. There's no way I would have thought in a million years that y'all felt some type of way about us hosting the Black Business Expo. Especially since Tisha speaks to Jasmine periodically and definitely since the Expo in 2023 and the first. Oh, man. Let me see if I got the rest of that. And the first, uh, da, da, da. y'all is so many. It's so many. I think this is it right here. All right. I don't know, but let's see. I hope that I, I can uh, finish the rest of that. But it looks like he also said to Christopher, you really said explained our blueprint. A panel, speakers, training, vendors is the blueprint? Black is trademarked. If this is anyone's idea, it's the comeback group's idea. I appreciate you revealing yourself, my guy. So I guess he was pissed off with him. So then he goes to him again, Chris, here's the lesson. If you felt a way, you should have cleared it up to my face. What you're saying makes no sense. You are suggesting that because I was a panelist at your event and told you that black would be a vendor at the next one that was giving me a blueprint. Chris, do you realize that 99% of all expos have the exact same blueprint? The difference is the relevance of the topic, the collaboration of the people and the value of the authentic message message. Look, the event is going to going to be too good for this shit we are doing here. I don't know. It looks like that was kind of cut off, too. So then Jasmine says, Marceau, I will also add that we discussed Black being the sponsor of the VIP area for our 2020 event after Angela, Black's manager at the time, if I'm not mistaken, submitted an inquiry to my nonprofit, the Financial Literacy Institute, for y'all to be vendors at the 2023 event. Several convos have been had, bro. Don't gaslight us. Ooh, child. 
oh my goodness it's just so much let me make sure i read everything so he did say something about him clearing it up to his face all right jasmine responded to that so y'all listen i might have been a little out of order with my reading but let me just say this it really appears that these people feel very slighted as it pertains to this black expo event they feel that tisha and marceau have stolen their idea okay now listen y'all i'm gonna say this i'm gonna jump out on a limb and say this we know that Marceau and Tisha are famous, especially Tisha, for copying and pasting, all right, and taking other people's ideas we, and, and executing them poorly. We know that. I mean, let's go back to even the Black Expo that they did last year, okay, that Tisha ain't want no feedback on, even though it was very poorly organized, Okay, no ex, she didn't want any feedback, all right, on something that she copied. Let's be clear. <laughs> and then did a poor job at executing it. And then when people wanted to give her feedback on it, she didn't want to hear it. Okay, this is why I can't stand them as business people because they really do not have any business acumen. In my opinion, just from what I've seen of them, they're horrible business people. I'm sorry. This is just what I see from them. <clears throat> They're not good organizers. I mean, you asking Stormy. This is why Stormy cussed them out last year. Because of that $100. You're asking them for $100 the day of the event that she's setting stuff up. Then you tell her that she's taking up too much space, but you never gave them dimensions. It's that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, again, they steal ideas and then they execute them poorly okay and this has been uh it looks really like this is a they're repeat offenders at doing this in my opinion just from watching the show but you know you guys what do you think about that because that's how I see it I really do um and then again didn't don't want no feedback so it looks like that this these two people Miss Jasmine Young and Christopher that they met with them they talked about their ideas they broke bread they said listen this is this is a dream of ours or whatever and it looks like they took all of the information from that meeting like the con artists that they are and they went and tried to do it themselves or are doing it themselves and did not include these two people in what was going on and they feel offended and they feel offended as friends um I think it's funny that Marceau told him to take it down or the friendship is over. Like, nigga, who you talking to? They don't have to listen to you. They addressed it publicly because they feel that they were offended publicly. That's how this shit go. I mean, I just, I'm trying to think like in my mind, like how many times have they done this to people? How many, they did it to Melody and Martel, in my opinion. They gave them a hand up. All right. Helping them out, getting them out the hood and, and living ratchetly. And they just gave them their ass to kiss once they th thought they reached a certain place in life. And I think that's hilarious. I really, really do. So, y'all, just because I saw this and listen, I'm like, they still scamming. I went and looked some stuff up with them because, again, in my opinion, they still freaking scamming okay and what i found is going to you guys are listen take a look on the screen it looks like on january 29th 2024 that these fools went and took another mortgage out and it looks like it has to do with that mountain. All right. And has to do with the gingerbread house. Their both addresses is listed on this document to the tune 
of $1.325 million, right? Uh, with a variable interest rate, which means that the interest rate could go up, down, around. Listen, the original principal amount of the loan, that's a lot. And honestly, to me, it's just another scam, y'all. Because I don't believe, in my opinion, that they make the kind of coin that needs to be made in order for them to handle a note this large. Now, listen, I ain't in their finances, so I don't know. But just based off of what I see on the show, how they how they run their businesses, to me, is giving crook vibes again. So what's really good? Now, listen, like I told y'all, it's the gingerbread house and the mountain all on one loan. Okay, so I don't really know exactly what that means. Maybe an expert can drop down in my comments and explain to me a future advanced mortgage. It's looking a little bit like a construction loan to me with like some draws on it, right? Like they might be pretending like they're going to build that house again on the side of that mountain. But in my opinion, I believe that it's another scam that leak leak set up to come back to us with the bullshit i don't believe he gonna build ish i think they gonna 54 fake them out and probably default on this as well that's just my opinion i think that they look for ways to pull pull money out to try to get liquid cash to try to keep up with the fake lifestyle that they want us to think that they have so we'll see if i see a house being built kudos to them but I don't think we're going to see one piece of drywall stuck up. Okay, no foundations being nothing. I think this is just another way for them to try to live Big Willie style and spend money that they've gotten through alone. I don't think they know how to build financial wealth. I think all they know how to do is scam to get money from banks for whatever and spend it and act like they millionaires. And keyword in that, is act because I don't think they got ish in my opinion now I'm gonna put a little screenshot of it up making sure I cover up the um identifying identifying information to protect them but listen anybody that's familiar with loans and lending and stuff like that y'all hop down in my comments and let me know is this another scam or nah Don't forget to hit that like button. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.